Hi everybody and guess who is going to be the star of our show for this month's tutorial. Yes, this cute little bunny. Uh, the head needs uh, to be attached. But we're going to do a deco mesh wreath design for spring and this will be our inspiration as far as the colors. So let's get started. We're going to use a basic work wreath form. This one in white. And the deco mesh that I selected is thin stripe fabric mesh. It matches the green in the bunny's outfit perfectly. And then we've got some florals that we're going to put in around the deco mesh. And of course it's got to have a bow. So this is the bow ribbon that we're going to use. It's a little daisy print and then just a solid of the green to tie that all together. Okay, so let's get going. I love working with this fabric mesh. It has such a good feel to it. Let's go ahead and get this started. Cut the tags off, of course. Get those tags off. Let's roll up the sleeve so we can really get with it. Okay, pull these ties up. It doesn't matter which row that you start on. Some people like to do it one way or another. I don't have a preference that I do. So, whatever makes you comfortable. Okay, so let's take this, fold in just a little bit on the underside here so that we get rid of that raw edge and then crimp it. And I'm just going to start right here at the top. And then do one twist. Okay, so for this design, I'm going to use about a 10 inch poof. That means if you gather your mesh and go over one from the next tie here, that is going to be about 10 inches. So stretch it over there and then poof it out. And there is your first poof. Okay? About 10 inches. So skip one, go to the next one. Do y'all ever feel like you chase your designs around the table? <laughs> Sometimes I feel like they get way far away, but I didn't know if that was just me or everybody does that. Okay, stretch and poof. Grab the right tie. I was grabbing the one from below. Now you can just let this go on the floor, which usually works best for me. Instead of getting out, the, I've got a mesh holder, but instead of getting that out and messing with it, I just lay it on the floor. Lay it on the floor. That's the best way to do it. Okay, gather. Such a soft, pretty color for spring. I love it. And I can't wait to see how cute this bunny is going to be in this deco mesh wreath. Now, I've already put one tie there, but we're going to pretend and go straight over here to the next tie and then make it a complete poof. Otherwise, it's not going to have a complete poof right there. So I'm going to undo the tie and then put that one right in there. Perfect. Now, so we've done the top row. Let's jump down to our bottom row. If you want to measure this and you're a measurer, -er -er, then of course do that. But for me, I'm just going to estimate. Okay. 
Okay, here is our next one. It's almost like we're building some grass, a grass meadow for that bunny to sit in. And of course it's going to grab my clothes. I always love that. I've ruined a few sweaters snagging deco mesh. I know some of you have too. Look how cute. Trying to keep it from snagging my sweater. Again, I may have to put my apron on. Now, if you get bored with this technique right here, just fast forward past it because it's going to be the same step all the way around this work wreath frame. Sometimes when I'm editing the video, I'll go ahead and fast forward it for you, knowing that it's repetitive. Just speed it up. We're getting close to the end. And our final poof here. So I'm going to undo that tie and put that right in there. Okay, one thing that I've noticed about this kind of color of deco mesh is that it's a little bit see-through. So what we're going to do is go ahead and use up the rest of this roll and take some poofs down the center. So if you were looking at your deco mesh frame, this is what I would consider the center piece right here. So we're going to do about the same kind of poof and instead of on the top row or the bottom row, we're going to do right down the middle. And so you'll just grab one of the ties from the bottom and one from the top and twist it that way. So you're going to have a middle section in there. And that's just going to add a little bit more fullness. Let me do that a little better. It's coming loose. Okay. So if you understand this, let me show you again. Here's this middle section. So we're just going to take a poof and come down the middle. And we're going to grab a tie from the bottom, a tie from the top, and then twist those together. But look how pretty that makes that twist. This works especially on uh, those that are a little bit skimpy looking. So if you can 
come down the middle and that kind of closes up any gap that you might have. I think it just adds a little bit more like it's complete, more complete. So compare this side with this side and you can see the difference of how that looks. And for practical reasons, we can use up the rest of the deco mesh. No need in leaving it if you've already bought it. And you have plenty of deco mesh to do this. It's not like you don't have enough. So in essence, you've got three rows. You've got the outer ring, the inner ring, and the middle ring going around. This is a beautiful color. I don't know if you can tell on camera whether or not you can see this color, but it's so soft and pretty. For spring, it's working out really good. So let me make sure I've stopping. Okay, so look how much more we had left. Isn't that great? I mean, we had plenty. So I'm just going to cut this, make sure I got all that, yep, so we're good. I'm going to cut that off and then I'm going to use a zip tie to push this to the inside and tie it onto the frame. Just so that it keeps it from uh, raveling around to the front. This is just a little extra little step. You don't have to do it. Alright. Okay, so we've got our frame completely gone around. We've got some left over that we might can do something with, which would be fun. Let's see if we can use it. We might can. All right, let's go ahead and anchor in our bunny and then we can continue on with the rest of our design. Okay, we're back here with our wreath on top of the wreath stand. I kind of like to have it up so I can see what's happening. One thing that I do want to do is use up some of the rest of this deco mesh. And so I'm going to take it and just make what I call a gathering bow. And let's straighten up this edge first. So, what I like to do is take, and I know you're not going to be able to see all of this because it's down on the table, but I'll lift it up once I get it folded the correct place. So, it's kind of like making a big southern little girl hair bow. I just fold these two pieces over like so. Okay, and then I'm just going to gather that down the middle. And we're going to make a big bow to go up here in the top of the wreath. Because why not? I mean, come on. Who doesn't like a big old bow? I'm going to use a zip tie to make that happen. 
So come right back here. Tie that on. You know down here in the south, we love our big old bows. Oh my goodness, look how super cute that is. And we have enough of the deco mesh to do it, so why wouldn't we use it? Okay, look, 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 look. Now I've got just a little bit left, not really a lot. This is all we had left off of that particular bolt, so we won't worry about that. Okay, let's get our bunny on there. Who's excited about this? This face, and she's got a cute bonnet. Oh my goodness. So let's talk about where we're gonna put everything. I think the bow kinda needs to look like it's coming off the top of her head. So to do, do that, we're gonna kinda nestle it in up there. Excuse me, I have the hiccup. They have these little wires that you can use to attach it. So let's pretend that this is a bow coming off her head. <laughs> and we'll take it. Put it right through there. Now if it's easier for you to work flat with this kind of project, then of course do that. I tend to like things to be up where I can see them a little better, but by all means do it the way you like. And I'm just wrapping this around the frame here, see? Let me get it on there, and then if we have to adjust it, we can. Alright, let's do the other side. Get that bow back there on the middle of your head, sister. Y'all ever talk to your elements? I'm very guilty of that. Like they're inanimate objects, but they can hear me talking. We have conversations about life and the pursuit of happiness. Okay, so let's see how that looks. Now, what we might need to do is because her head is kind of heavy. So we may need to take a zip tie and kind of, because I don't want her looking down. I want her to look up. So let's take a zip tie and run it through her petticoat right here. Actually, it's her hat, it's not her petticoat, but it looks like a petticoat. Run it through there, and then that way we can kind of pull her head back. And see what that did is I just lifted her head completely up, made it all better. Yes, okay. Now, that's so much better. Look at you. Up there being all happy. There are wires in this in the ears, so you just kind of have to find them and shape them. There we go. Looky, 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 looky. She's got that big bow up there. Oh, y'all. So cute. Now, let's decide about her dress. Her body actually is going to go, of course, right under her head. 
right? So, does she even have arms? Did I miss her arms? Were they supposed to give me arms? I don't know. She's armless. Maybe she's got them behind her back. Let's say, let's say that she does. So, here are a couple of choices you could make. We could put the bunny's head on and then have a bow here and have the bunny bottom come in here. I'm going to squeeze it up so she's up there and there's no um, break between her body and her head. But I guess this wreath kit does not have arms. They're implied arms. I have to just play with it and get it situated. Okay, let's go over here. Try not to block y'all's view. Remember, we've got some other elements to go in here, some florals and ribbon. Of course it's going to get stuck because I'm filming. When I'm not filming, things go perfectly fine until I start filming and then things go crazy. Just have to wrestle. I'm going to wrestle it. Okay, let's see what we got, little girl. For one, her legs twisted around. Now, I think what needs to happen too is this body needs to be zip tied to her head because we don't want it to come apart and have any separation. So I'm just going to take a zip tie and make a little cut in the fabric. Don't cut yourself. Put your zip tie through there. Okay. Now we're just going to come up here and grab this head. You didn't know that when you were doing wreath making, you would be a surgeon. So we do all kind of surgery on our elements. Okay, let me cut a little spot there. Now I've got to come back through it. There we go. All right, now she's connected. Get 
your dress straight. Look. I wonder if it did have arms and I just didn't get them out of the bag or something. I don't know. We're going to pretend it doesn't have arms. That way we'll just continue to go on. Okay, so what I want to do is make a bow for this side and this side. And maybe we can just pretend that her arms are underneath the bow. So here's our first ribbon. Matches beautifully. going to freehand this bow. You don't always have to have a bow maker, y'all. Pinch and twist. Now let's get I'm going to go ahead and put that in there so I don't have to hold it. Okay. Now we've got this green, which really does tie in with the fabric on this bunny. So let's put that in there. Let's see, I want it a little bit smaller than the first bow. You could also cut ribbon tails. I am not a real fan of ribbon tails. It's just not my thing, but if that's your deal, then do your deal. You know what I mean? Oh, she's so cute. All right, we're going to do the same bow over here. Not all the time do I do symmetrical, um, but this at this point we are. So just kind of measure over there what we did. That's one reason to use a bow maker because you do get exactly the same size when you're trying to do a bow that's going to be on each side. That gives you the exact measurements that you're looking for. Okay, let's get this guy in here. All right, let's add our green. Want to make sure those wires are kind of camoed. I think my favorite part about this so far is this bow up here. I think that is so cute how it turned out. Alright, I'm going to get 
right over here. Add this in. Now you can either untie it or put it on top either way. We're going to add probably a flower on top of that anyway, so. Just kind of smoosh it down. Let's get that one up kind of the way the other one looks. Okay. All right, let's add some florals because I think they need it. Her legs do bend, so you can do that. Okay, these are two rinoculus filler bushes and we're going to use um, use these to kind of I'm not going to put any on top of that bow because I want it to be seen but this is when you start adding texture looks really cute Look at my glue gun, it's decorated. Something got stuck on there. It looks like it's part of it. Who knew? All right, let's get to cutting these. I am gonna take these apart. Usually if you just pull one, they all start kind of coming apart. But I'm not going to pull any more out of that. So I want to come up in here behind, behind the bow, the big gathering bow, and put these right kind of come in there. And I'm just going to dip it in my glue pot and let it attach to the deco mesh. It will stay in there without a problem. You want it kind of behind the bow, okay? Well, here's a little piece that fell off, so I'm just going to stick that in there randomly. seems like Christmas was all consuming and now we get to this part of the year where Easter is so fun with all the colors and soft flowers, things that make me happy. Look at that, that flower is so beautiful. Do y'all get excited about your flowers? Listen, I do. Okay, let me see. I think I'm gonna come up under this bow. It's kind of coming out. We've got one, two, three, four more pieces on that bush. And then we'll use the other bush for this side. Let's come in here behind this.
I may save two to go up on the top. So let's just reserve these two pieces. And then I'll put one more kind of down here for her and then we can reserve those two pieces for up here. I like to put my florals inside where the deco mesh gets gathered because it does have some more ability to hold things. So just keep that in mind when you're placing in your florals to glue. Put them right there so that it grabs them. Look how cute. Oh my gosh. Are y'all loving that? I love it. Okay, we're going to save those two. Now let's take this one apart. Make sure y'all can see. Let's take this one apart. We'll save two for the top. Let's bring it back down. And do the same thing we did on that side. Which is behind the bow. Now if you work better doing each side as you go, then do it that way. Sometimes you might lose track of what you did from the other side, but um, Stand up little ears. We may have to put a little dot of glue behind those ears to hold them up. Because she keeps falling. Okay, so we have that one and then we did one right at the next joint. Right in here. Now sometimes I will use picks on my florals that I do deco mesh with because they will penetrate the, um, the mesh themselves and that kind of helps but um, I didn't do that with these. Just have to be careful that if you do that, flip them around so they don't um, cut anybody if they were to touch them. And I guess once you get all this stuff in here, you can't really tell that she doesn't have arms. She's got, her arms are reaching into the flowers. We'll just say that. Okay, so we got one on either side of there. I love that these ranunculus have wire in them so you can kind of place them where you want. Works out pretty. Okay. Now we've got two more. Actually one more. So we're going to put four up there. Okay. So
right, I'm going to bring it down. I know you won't be able to see the whole thing on the camera, but I'm going to bring it down so I can work on the top. Let you see that. So I don't want to put anything on the bow because that's a focal point. So we'll make sure these go behind the bow. Okay, for some reason, the audio completely went off at this point in the video. So I'm just going to narrate the rest. I went through and put in those extra stems at the top behind the bow, just with a lot of glue on the stem. Just right behind that big gathering bow. The idea is just to shape those so that they have a nice look to them. And we're definitely going to have to glue her ears to that deco mesh. They keep flopping forward. The wire in it was not very thick kind of wire. It was just real flimsy looking. So go ahead and stick in those extra picks behind the bow. So you've got something up there behind it. And then I just took that one little flower and pulled it forward like she had a flower on her bonnet. Now we're going to glue the back, just a little bit of glue back there to keep the ears. Stuck to the deco mesh. At this point in the video, I just did a review of the process that we did with the work frame, 10 inch poofs around the outer rim, inner rim, and also down the middle. How we added in our florals, the big gathering bow at the top. We put in the bunny, of course. Just go back through and check those florals and make sure that they're all sticking to the deco mesh or to the frame. Turned out to be a really cute project. Lots of fun. Sweet, sweet design. There she is. Thank you for watching and until next time, bye-bye.